Hey everyone, it's September 2024. Welcome to another episode of the Monthly Wrap-Up. In case you're not familiar with this series, it's where I take footage or clips from the previous month, the clips that didn't make the normal edit of my normal videos, and I share them with you. It's extra sharp content to share with you, plus there's some pretty cool things in there. This month we're going to take a look back at the month of August. August was a scorcher. The temperatures really went up high here in Southern California. And with that, the water temperatures went up pretty high as well. Now, August has been highlighted by even more large sharks showing up. And now this is typical during this time of year. So it may not be the fact that there's many more white sharks. It may be something as simple as I've gotten better at my process of finding white sharks. And, you know, that probably leads to seeing more, right? But still, I'm amazed at just how many of these large sharks I'm seeing. If there's one thing that I really enjoy in the summer, it's finding sharks in and around kelp. Uh, here's a clip of a shark. Now look closely. Can you find it? It's right here. Now, when I'm searching, it often takes a bit of time and patience to confirm that there is indeed a white shark here. It's right in this area. You can see the change in contrast, indicating the shark's location when I lower the drone. This is a great example of just how hard it is sometimes to find a white shark, especially around kelp. Here's another example. This shark is cruising along near the bottom near kelp. Imagine you are in a helicopter or a plane flying rapidly. Unless you stop and watch for an extended period of time, you're likely going to miss these shadows that are moving, which are sharks. One thing I do is I have my eyes trained heavily towards seeing slight differences in contrast. Now it's not so hard to see when they're not in the shade areas, but the second it passes into those dark areas, they get pretty challenging to spot. It basically just disappears. It takes a bit of practice, but you can see that the second the shark comes up, it's easier to see, but it is remarkable how fast they can just disappear into their environment. It's a true testament at how effective their counter shading can be. So in case you guys didn't see my giant sharks episode that I released recently, I'm going to link to it in the video description below so you can check that out. It's a pretty interesting uh, video because I haven't seen this many big sharks in one place in a long time. So uh, my big mission here is to see if these sharks are pregnant. One way to do that is to get up close to them. My eventual goal is to get an ultrasound of one of these sharks. That's on the horizon. Now here's a taste of what's coming. This month I was able to get extra close to one of these big sharks and I captured some incredibly detailed ID shots of it. Here you can see I managed to capture some high resolution underwater footage of this big shark. I can positively confirm that this is indeed a female shark. Now that's not monumental in itself, but if I could get close enough to get an ultrasound of one, that could give us a pretty interesting topic to discuss here on one of these videos. I have a full episode of this adventure coming up soon, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so every month on both social media and here on YouTube, one of the questions that folks ask me is this, what beach or what location are you seeing sharks at? One of the biggest reasons that I don't share locations is that the one time that I did share a location, the following week, there were people at that beach chumming with blood in the water, just 150 to 200 yards away from people. That actually poses a threat to swimmers, where normally sharks are, if they're around, they're just cruising by. But the moment that people start putting blood in there and try to do things that would entice them to be more aggressive, then it's an issue. So it's unfortunate that this happens. There are a few bad apples out there that unfortunately follow my videos and social media to find where there are white sharks. Now, once again, I catch a lot of flack from a select few folks that want to portray me as anti-fishing, but honestly, that's just not the case. Sure, many folks tell me white sharks are protected. There aren't folks actively fishing for white sharks. And to those folks, I can just show you the videos here. That's just not true. In fact, here's a video of a shark that just a few weeks ago was caught by a fisherman doing just that. This is a video provided to me by a concerned citizen of one of two sharks that this gentleman caught just a day after I was there. 
He was using a drone to fish for sharks, ironically, and it happens to be the very same location I made the mistake of sharing here on a YouTube video. The man in the video is actually heard bragging about catching seven sharks at that location. I returned to the same location just a few days ago and I found another shark that had been, uh, his head had been severed and the, the fins had been cut off. And I, I, I can show you a photo of, the, of it briefly right here so that you can see I'm not making this up. People are doing this. So unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be sharing locations of sharks in the future on this channel or on social media because of this. The fact of the matter is there are sharks that are being caught at these locations. But now on to more exciting things and more positive things that happen in uh, August on the shark front. Once again, I missed more shots. Here's a pretty interesting view. I had stopped following this shark momentarily to grab a bite of my sandwich. I figured I might as well grab my sandwich since this shark hadn't done anything for a couple hours. Of course, just as I took a bite and I glanced down at my screen, the shark started moving erratically. Now this is something I've seen before, but I really wish I was filming close when this occurred. Uh, notice the bucking behavior. So what's this shark doing? It's actually pooping. Uh, you just never know what you're going to see when you're out there, right? Just like every month I film things other than sharks, this month I was lucky enough to go on vacation with my family to Hawaii, and I put up the drone a couple times, and I still was able to find some sharks, not surprisingly, and some eagle rays and plenty of turtles, but overall, gave me some more footage to share with you guys. Before I end this episode, I want to share something with you. Uh, do you guys remember the trip I took to Cape Cod back in 2022? Uh, do you remember this shark? It's about a 14-foot male white shark, and I was present the day that Dr. Greg Skomel tagged it in conjunction with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. This shark was named Mr. Pallas, and it's made some pretty big headlines recently. Last month, in a paper released by Frontiers in Marine Science, it was documented that Mr. Pallas was detected as far south as the Bahamas, along with nine other sharks. All these sharks are tagged in the US and Canada between 2020 and 2024. That's quite a journey. And it's pretty incredible that I was able to actually see this shark in person right next to me. And then it ends up so far away in the Bahamas. Man, I know these sharks go a long ways, but to actually see and, and, and be next to a shark that's gone that far, it's pretty incredible. Now, speaking of Cape Cod, I'm going to be back there this week. In fact, I leave in a couple days. I'm going to spend some time there with the Atlantic White Shark Conservancy. I'm going to do some searching around there. Uh, one of my big goals is to, to try to find some sharks in and around some seals. Uh, also, maybe find some younger sharks up there. Uh, and, you know, just spend some time exploring the Cape. Uh, I'm going to make a video series of that journey, so stay tuned for videos about that. Uh, I love the East Coast, and I love the whole uh, Jaws effect that, that actually exists there in person. In fact, I'm going to go up to Martha's Vineyard and spend a, a, a day up there exploring the, all the Jaws filming sites. I'm a film nerd, so that's going to be a real treat for me. That's going to do it for this month's episode of the Monthly Wrap-Up. As always, thank you so much to my Patreon members and to my YouTube members. Your support makes trips like Cape Cod possible. I'm able to film sharks because of your support. And if you can just like and subscribe to videos, it makes a big difference. I know you get tired of hearing that, but it really does help. And one last thing, you like this shirt? You know, it's a photo I took in Guadalupe Island. So I put it on a t-shirt take a look at my merch store if you get a chance and uh, i'm gonna go get ready start packing for cape cod i'll see you next month and stay tuned for some pretty cool videos coming your way thanks for watching see you soon